Well, good day there, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of Chop Lines and Inlines. It's, uh, it's a beauty day here today up at camp. It's just a real nice fall day, but it's quite smoky. The smoke is blown in here from somewhere up at camp here, guys. Up at my off-grid homestead we are here, but I don't know where it's burning down, but she's blown in here pretty good, I couldn't even tell you. Kind of surprised me this morning, but it's a little chilly. The wood stoves are going, and yeah, nothing to complain about, though. Oh, she's a beauty. Anyway, here I am. I bought this thing. Let's get right at it. Um, as you know here, I it wasn't too long ago I was installing a little Wii Boost, uh, just a El Cheapo um, cell phone signal booster here. And it didn't go well, and I'll tell you later about that, the whole thing. But trying something different here. This is many, a many, a many, a many a steps up here. This is uh, the High Boost 10K Plus. It's not cheap. You can cover up to a 10,000 square foot area. Or it is a big ass cell phone signal booster. I'm not going to bore you with uh, the statistics too much or any of that shit. But I'll do, I will show you here what's all in the box and such. Now, don't be fooled like I was when you open this thing up because the reality of it is there's there's not much to it. It looks like a lot, but it's just not that much to it. So we got our instructions. We got three different kinds of cord and I like how they've done this, okay? This is, is I'm so glad about this. It's a, it's a jumper cable, so you can put this through the window, smaller cable, and then that way you can jump it through. I like that, I really like that. Then we got two lengths of cable here. One's 16 foot, the other one's 50. You can use the, only the smaller cable if need be. If you only need the longer cable, you can use the longer cable. If you can jump, need to jump it through a window, you use both and it's good. Lots of cable too, you got like 65 feet there in total. I like that. Here's our booster itself. You know, it's it's a piece of, like it's an electronic and this is what's expensive about the whole thing. It's a 68 dB uh, and I believe 12 dBm, it might be 10 shit, I don't know. 12 dBm, okay. Now there's a fair bit to this here is our antenna and it's a directional antenna it's a light one it's got a hole here on the bottom so any moisture accumulation drains out and that's why it tells you that's the way it's got to go up what this is is waterproof tape for connections this is sticky shit i don't think we'll use it it's to mount things our power cord uh to plug in the booster simple screws to screw uh, the booster into the wall, adapter if we're going to be running in an indoor antenna I guess, I didn't see it until now. If this has a built in antenna in it as well, here's our, here's our mounting hardware to set this onto our antenna. Now it's very simple, very simple actually to set up. Now for most people, all you got to do, install the antenna on the roof and then run it down to the booster, connect the booster, plug in the booster, figure out which direction the antenna is going to face, whatever. The only problem I run into, it's going to make this just a little bit more time consuming for us here, friends, but not too bad, is that there has to be a separation of 20 foot vertical or the equivalent of three times, three times that on a horizontal basis. And that's so that uh, they don't interfere with one another, eh guys? It means I'm gonna have to get the antenna pretty high up in the air. So in terms of finding where the best cell signal is, it could give you a bit of trouble. For me, it's obvious because I've only really seen it show up in one place here. Now, for whatever reason, the slightest touch of signal right at the peak there, um, I, I was able to register it at 130 dB, which is terrible. It somehow catches right here. So that's a big part of that figured out. To be high enough above the booster, I gotta be five foot above the peak of the roof. I don't wanna put any kind of mount on the roof. Yeah, I just don't wanna piss around with it. I may possibly mount it here as well and then send it straight up. We'll see. I'm gonna have to fabricate my own antenna mount as well as I'm going to actually be building a lightweight antenna here that'll show you and we just gotta figure out how to mount it. It'll be right on guys okay we're at workshop here time to get her figured 
I originally didn't know what I needed for an antenna. And this ended up like a pole for the thing. And this ended up working out to be perfect. So I'll share with you what it is the electrical conduit. It's 10 foot, I think. Good and lightweight. It's cheap. It's like $1.50 a foot or something. Now, I got some scrap two by sixes here. They're gonna work good. This is about exactly what I need, I think. It's gonna work perfect. And I'll show you my backwards engineering here and we'll get her done. Okay, so the diameter of my pole here for the antenna is just slightly over one and one eighth. Okay, now I just gotta make it a, a touch wider, so. Do that for a second, should go. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this up here. I got this one, it's not drilled all the way through, so it'll hold the bottom of the thing there. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be a beauty, guys. So I'm gonna excessively fasten this together so it's good and strong with the combination of nails and screws. Countersink them a bit so they don't split to get them flat. The board I put up top is actually, it's actually a two by eight. Uh, and it looks funny not being flush with my two by sixes. I just didn't have enough two by sixes or rather the one piece was split too bad. And it's like, what's the sense of narrowing it down so it's flush if it's just decreasing the strength of my, my mount, eh? Okay, Fred, check this out. This thing is solid. It's really solid. Then I put this extra piece, it's cracked up a bit, so I didn't want to use it here. And then that sits right under. And this isn't drilled all the way through, so it holds holds it from going all the way through. Sits in the bottom. Yeah, that's good. It's pretty damn snug. It's just a beauty. It's real a beauty, guys. Now I'm gonna just stain this up quick with diesel and used oil because I love it. And uh, that'll match the cabin. It's the best thing you could probably use to stain it. It don't cost you a damn thing. Right on. We'll let her dry a bit. Not really, but you know, it doesn't really dry. It just kind of soaks into the wood, but give it a sec there before I'm covered in it and work on our antenna here a bit. We got this bracket to secure the antenna to the pole here. So we'll just tighten it on here. Not too tight, cause it's just, just plastic, you know, whatever. So we got to make sure she's the right way. And this is a directional antenna and I'm thinking I want to put it on just a slight, slight incline, but I understand the power of a couple degrees when it's a, you know, a few miles, it's a huge thing. Then we just got to mount this to the pole and this is going to go real easy. So we'll start with this one and just come through, oh shit. Put the U-bolt and then this clamp, which will hold it there and really keep it from moving around a lot too, cause it's kind of got some uh, teeth to it, if you will. And then onto our bracket, put our washers. Of course the nut on that too, guys. Just the ever so slightest, like I'm pretty low here, but it's a long ways, I know that. I know exactly where the tower is. I'll just tighten these U-bolts down and I'm really gonna tighten them down pretty good. They, these got teeth on them here that are biting in nice and that'll really hold it there good, but I'm pretty well tightening her down all the way. 
and she'll never go anywhere if a dirty old raven sits up there, you know, whatever kind of thing. So, this cable is 240 low loss, fuck, coaxial, fuck, cable 50 ohm, whatever. Anyway, now I know you want to be somewhat careful with these when doing this so there's just a pin to them so you know, it's good to be gentle with them and uh, I imagine this connection is actually probably fine without this but we'll put it on there you know just to be safe of course that should just be right on guys. Now we of course want to secure all of this to the pole itself. Get back here as well. You know that's good and sturdy there now guys. So Okay guys, so I got to put this thing up here now. Now the only thing that's tricky about it is that it's it's like I was trying to look cool, fuck's sake. Um, the only thing is, it's shingled, so it's not flush. So my solution to that is gonna be just a shitload of nails there. And we'll get her good, cause it's heavy now, you know, being good and sturdy, but um, I gotta hit the stud. If I don't hit the stud, it's not gonna be quite ideal, because it's heavy. And slicker than no fuck, because it's covered in oil. <laughs> I got lucky in that it turned out pretty decent like it's pretty damn straight it's close to level is what it is but I can't guarantee that pole is gonna look perfectly level because in my holes might be slightly off it might be slightly twisted that's definitely not perfect you know that's just how it goes but um pre drilling big ass nails uh they're probably are those five inches guys yeah probably um so we're just going to nail the shit out of it and pre-drill it, otherwise I'll destroy it with these big spikes. See, it's gonna be easy here to move the antenna when I'm setting it up. You know, just move it a move it a smidge, whatever, and it'll be just beauty. So, I think life is easy now. You know, the mount actually looks pretty nice, but I knew there'd be no way to make this antenna look pretty. Now, another thing I thought of here, guys, I really did think about it, was put it in one of these trees, put a two by four out, but then it was gonna be so much harder to get it set right. I would have to have someone in the cabin while I wait to nail it. And then these trees are probably just gonna fall over anyway. And then when they do, that's a disaster. And running the cord all the way here, I either have to bury it or I put it in the tree and the birds sit on it. Don't like that. Man as fuck, boys. Okay, so the truth is, I don't have a lot of places to put this. I just don't. And I'm kinda have to put it lower um, because that's what they said so they don't interfere. And she also said that it don't matter if it's higher or lower in the building in terms of how it broadcasts the signal. I just don't know enough about how that signal moves around, honestly, to tell you well. So I'm gonna, what this is, is like this, just slides on top. This has gotta go right here. Okay, 
beauty guys that should be a real beauty just slide it over here okay so we got a few different ports here all we're using is the outside and the power and uh yeah so we'll deal with that in a second here now this really is the moment of truth oh sorry it's a prick of a place to for me to show you now i'd tell you this is the moment of truth but the reality of it is i don't know what half these numbers are going to mean well all of them so hey this is cool I just hear my phone going off upstairs and that definitely means this thing is working. But what this means, not a fucking clue. So uh, I've been had this uh, cell phone signal booster here installed probably a week. So the first thing I realized is there's DBM ratings on the booster itself and with the directional antenna you have to twist the antenna and point it in the correct direction. When it's in the best direction, the decibel ratings uh, will indicate and make life easy. The problem I had is the signal is so weak that on like my, my LTE band here, it's below 20 dBm or higher than, sorry. So it's not even picking up. So I was getting the same readings whichever way I face the antenna. So here I was looking pretty stupid facing the antenna the wrong direction. What I ended up doing is using my phone and actually like playing around uh, with the performance of the phone and then found out there, made some fine tune adjustments and we we're good. I originally put this booster downstairs cause I thought I was slick making up that vertical separation to avoid isolate uh, oscillation right between the antenna and the booster. Now I had called someone at high boost and they said, oh yeah, that's fine. It probably is normally, but it was not working in this instance. Now I don't know enough about how cell phone signal travels, honestly, but here's what I learned through experience. When I put it downstairs, I didn't get damn thing upstairs, nothing. And this is where I am. This is where I am on the couch, my office station there. It's got to be up here. I think it has problems traveling, um, not just, not because it's a vertical, but even like through the floor even, you know, it just did not quite travel good. The booster I ended up putting here. Now this booster, it tells you when it's oscillating. This one is not interfering here, even though there's not a very high, much of vertical separation. I think it has so little signal to work with that I'm really losing on 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 the amount this signal travels and the amount it's able to broadcast it throughout the throughout the building if you will so when you get this thing it has a square footage rating of up to 10,000 square feet the way they calculate that is they assume you put it in the center of the building and then it's a radius of such and such to multiply to to, to end up at 10,000 but that's with really ideal cell service is what that is like there is a huge drop from here to my bed so I'm definitely thoroughly impressed with like what you can do with it the cell service is so good I can do some pretty serious things and we're not done the install because I don't think I'm quite satisfied one is we got to finish this install in a clean fashion get all our cables tied up we also got to ground this mass so we don't electric cock sucker ourselves. Like, I've been, I play a lot round with electricity. God knows more than I should. But there's no way I want to get struck by fucking lightning. Fuck. I built way too much fire here. Jesus fucking Christ. Not quite satisfied where that antenna is. I think if we raise it higher, put that antenna higher, we can really do a lot more. So we're going to play around with that and really test the capability of this thing. I have some explaining to do because it wasn't long ago I made a video of me buying that little Weeboo cell phone signal booster. And I can't wait to shoot this clip and show you this fucking piece of shit so I can finally get rid of it. This is a $300, $300 
a mess. That all it is is a tangle of cords and nothing else. I understand damn well how many times better this booster is uh, in terms of boosting capabilities and it's three times the price nearly. I know we're not comparing apples to apples. I had this thing installed for probably three months. It broke and I told you it's broke again and it happens once with one part and I'm not too mad it happens twice in such a short period of time something's fucky so you look here there's three things to this you can see I got multiples here so it first broke so they sent me these two new replacement parts so I got these two are brand new parts working two months okay it breaks again there's three components to this thing. Three, that's it. At least two of them are not working at this point. So, to me, this is no coincidence. I've worked with enough piece of shit equipment and fixed on enough things to identify when something's not. When your life expectancy on parts is two months. Well, first off, I'm having a hell of a time getting them to send me the part on warranty. I know even if I do, it's gonna break again. And if I didn't pay $300 on it, I would light it on fire because it would bring me great satisfaction. The amount of time I spent with customer service, if you wanna call it that, and I would pay someone $300 to go back and tell me do not buy this thing. Okay guys, let's get this done and hopefully, hopefully we're not just wasting our time here by going this extra step. What I did here is that stuff is, this is one inch conduit. And what I did here is like, I just bought one size and then this is one inch that goes inside. I think this is like 1.16 diameter, I forget already. We'll drill through this here guys and put a couple bolts through uh, to secure it and that'll work really good as opposed to trying to connect the butt ends of two of the same size pieces. Okay guys, have these bolts here. Got drilled to the perfect size. They're actually a grade eight bolt, but I got. That works good here in the right length. Locking washer and Loctite, it's overkill again. But to be fair, just in the nature of this material and its flimsiness, it is probably gonna wanna bend and then loosen. And uh, there, there's going to be a fair bit of actually like vibration and movement. There's so much leverage on this at this point. It's so tall. Even though it's so light and there's so little for the wind to catch, it's going to be blowing around like you wouldn't believe. As long as it stays up there, should be pretty good. Now, there is play here. So i got to make sure this thing's going straight before I tighten the shit out of it. I don't even know if I give a fuck. Uh, plot twist, I don't give a fuck. Got two good bolts there. Seized down in a way they should never loosen off, so I figure that's good. Now we gotta reattach the tenon the same way we did before. I just got a couple nails there, a couple slots. Perfect, that's gonna be real pretty nice. Okay guys, so I'll show you how I got this uh, booster set up here inside and all the cords. It turned out well. Uh, I'd said to recommend run this with a thousand joule surge protector. So you can see I got plugged in here and it runs off the inverter. So it's a good thing I put that there, you can see. And uh, I needed the extra plugs in anyway. I didn't have many on the inverter and it's a real nice place to have my laptop charger, phone charger, whatever. And then this is plugged in. All the cords are hid behind the couch, uh, like the power cord and also the cable coming in and goes behind the couch down there around the dresser and out the window. So that works really good. And it's just in the perfect spot because it's right central, right where I'm hanging out working here on the couch or at my office or at my, it's just, it works good there. It also a little bit works downstairs, but not as well as it does up here. So it's really good where it's at. Okay guys, <laughs> this is crazy. So I got this antenna set up, ready to go, cable secured and switched around and waterproof taped again. 
No. <laughs> this is funny. Because I was trying to think of a way I could, you know, um, put a, get some more leverage on this. Because the way it's at, it's got 20 foot of leverage on me. I'm just trying to hold the bottom at the top of my ladder. But I'm kind of in a send it mood. So it's either going to go or she's not going to go. But it's getting late here. And I just want her done. I like to live dangerously. What can I tell you? Fuck this. I knew I was feeling deadly today. Fuck yeah. Fuck is this gonna look silly in any wind? Oh. <laughs> Fuck it's silly. So this whole works is just kind of a grand experiment here. Now, I hate to say it, I really hate to say it. The only thing that would really, really, really suck right now is if I get in there and there's no DBM increase, can you imagine we went through all that? I would end up putting it back the way it was before, truthfully. But I'm almost certain. Now the cell tower is so far away, it 100% helps. Like this, this clearing in front of us, it helps us a lot. But it's such a long ways, the elevation, the rise, the height of the cell tower is essentially meaningless on that linear scale. So when I imagine this antenna going up 10 feet higher, I imagine 10 foot less of all the bush in the way interfering with the cell phone signal. So I think in all, it makes all logical sense. So at the very least, we can't feel stupid about it. This to me is literally hard to believe. 76, oh shit, that's not gonna pick up well. 76 dBm here. I know I'm close to the booster, but still, it's crazy. Like, that's as good a cell reception you have when you're like right next to a cell tower. It's crazy to me. See, here I'm holding it out where I usually sit on the couch. It's like, it's like 80 to 90. It's crazy, so crazy. Okay guys, high time we, we wrap this up. We've been playing around with it, got a good feel for it. It's deadly, but. Got to put the finishing touches on it here. Um, we got to ground shit here because like it on the grand scheme of things, it really isn't higher than any of these trees that are all right. It don't really matter, I guess, in that respect. It hits one of them trees or it hits the antenna. It doesn't matter. It fucking sucks. We got to be careful. We don't really severely electric suck ourselves because that is just not going to be a fun day. Um, I got this here thing. It is... Uh, a lightning arrestor we're gonna put on the how the fuck do i say it is it coax cable or whatever they call it i have a connection there where we jumped it through the window and we'll just connect this in between and this is to ground this here now the reality of it is what happens when when the lightning hits it's probably fucking shit anyway um i bought this it was like 20 or 30 dollars maybe it helps me sleep better at night at the very best of it and we get on with like the big thing here we got to do is ground the antenna mast. The reality of it is, is I got this big number six ground. The reality of it is that lightning hits that this is just going to obliterate. The big reason though is during an electric storm, any, it, the static will build on the mast and that'll attract a lightning. So we ground it and that static can be um, into the ground. Then it, uh, that's, that's what's important here for us, I guess. It was beneficial, put that up there. Not hugely, but like, I just showed you the service I'm getting, it's absolutely insane. It definitely helped to put it a, a wider area, but still not super impressive there, but super impressive how much signal you can get while being close to it. But I still think the signal is just too weak to really broadcast any real distance. But let's get this fucking thing done and get on with life. It rained, which kind of sucks around here. I got the ladder here at full sh full extension here, so so I got a bracer here so she don't fall over. Here's what this looks like. I, I put it on that connection. It was the easiest because I can just run that ground and attach it to the mast ground, which is right here. And then you can see I, got, I secured the cable there and tucked it in behind here so that it just these little clamps. 
Okay, so, I'm not nearly died. Um, so here you can see I got all that X. There's no way I'm cutting that off. Gonna need it, wasting connection, blah, everything. So I tape it up, secure it there. I'll show you how it looks from afar. Now I got my ground connected, one inch ground clamp onto the mast. I'm gonna run it back down there. Uh, just kind of tuck it up high here because it'll be harder to see up top here. And then down, probably behind the downspout there, and then right there to my grounds. Oh, well, I sure got lucky when I guessed how much of this stuff I would need. I would have been pretty shit up if I even picked up half a foot less, eh? eh? Um, what I'm doing here is just connecting it uh, to the grounds here that I got this fencer running on. And I don't think that's any issue. But this is one of those things, like, I, I'm not going to bullshit you. I just don't know the most about. Never done anything, like, trying to avoid antenna getting struck by lightning. Anything strikes you as unusual or wrong or whatever, tell me, please. I don't want to get struck by lightning. Like, if this ground works as it should, it really should be just as about as rare as anything. But, anyway... So you know I got the mask grounded and then on the coax cable uh, to the to the booster I got it with a surge protector. Now whether that works well or not, who knows, eh? Like when what's how many amps are coming through there? Like when I get oh my god, I would don't even want to know. Insane. Anyway, and then a surge protector from the booster to the power source and then to the inverter is there some kind of trip there or fuse there should be like she hits the battery box she's a she's gonna go kaboom <laughs> so we hope for the best i think i've done about everything i can this is probably the most useful of all things beautiful Okay guys, so I'll show you the finished product. Uh, the antenna definitely look a little bit funny sitting up there, but you just forget about it and move on with life. You know, uh, it turned out super clean. Everything is nice. Already showed you everything inside. It hasn't changed, you know. Cable, I hardly noticed it up there. This mast looks good. I would have built it deeper had I known I was gonna end up putting two and was gonna make up that height anyway. It was just that. Worked that way, but it's super solid. Um, cables up there. You see the bunch, it don't really matter, but running up along there in the shadow, you can't even see it. And then back down here, grounded to the antenna, or the mast to the grounds here, can't even hardly see it behind the, the downspout there. So it's just wonderful, turned out really great. Yeah, so that's it, pretty late in the day here, just wrapping that up as a quick little project. Sure is cloudy and overcast and the days are short, and but uh, beauty of a day. You know, weather has been top notch here. Um, yeah, so that's it for that, man. Like, it, it's just so easy to set up that thing. Like, you're dealing with a lot of cables. And um, it, when you open the box and there's everything there, it's quite often it'd be daunting. But it's so simple. Literally, anyone can do that so easily, what I just did. And uh, so far, I'm really happy with the product, you know. Um, everything about it. I thought everything was set up well. The components were nice. It was easy to install. It was with some thought, yeah, for sure. And uh, really, the only thing I can hope for at this point is it for, for it to last a good while, you know, uh, if it lasts uh, for a certain amount of years, you know, then life is good. Um, the one thing is maybe I could kind of foreseen, I definitely knew I wasn't going to be putting her 10,000 square feet, but the coverage, it doesn't really push out, and I believe that it is solely the limited signal obviously there's just less to amplify and push out uh, as much as i don't know as much about the transmission of that but it's just so wonderful to have it set up there next to my couch in my office and i'm trying to do research i'm looking what kind of wheel bearing seals i need or whatever and i it don't it doesn't become a pain in the ass i'm waiting on slow internet just fucking wasting my time or uh having to go somewhere else to research it like that's what it was here for a long time it's going somewhere else to research all my projects there's new things happening here every day you know so that's a real beauty of it and why i love it and it's something hopefully i can use for a long time not just in this cabin but wherever i'm living in uh you know 
So that's the beauty of it, guys. I hope you enjoyed me doing this and see uh, see this product and setting it up and having a deadly one. And I uh, hope everyone is doing just great as always, friends. Over and out.